everyone. Uh, welcome to another edition of 10 for the Chairman. For those of you who don't know, this is where I take 10 questions from uh, subscribers and answer them to the best of my ability. Subscribers are the uh, subset of our community that contribute money uh, every month uh, to allow us to do an enhanced additional uh, community uh, interaction, feedback, uh, videos, uh, what we do here around the verse, things like uh, the Jump Point uh, magazine we do every month that's uh, 50 to 70 pages, some of our sort of in-depth pieces behind the CIG pieces. Uh, all of that takes time, people, money to do, and uh, the subscribers uh, make that possible. So the community in general just gets a, uh, a much closer view of how we're making and building this game, which is great. So thank you very much for subscribers for doing that. Um, and uh, thinking of thank you, I, I got a, a nice uh, uh, letter and actually t-shirt here signed uh, although, I think this is maybe Ben's size, not necessarily Chris' size. Maybe it's the bigger size just to get all the names on, but it's from uh, starcitizen-wiki.de, which is the German uh, citizen wiki. Uh, so you can see with the nice German flag right there. And uh, it's very cool with everyone's name signed. So uh, thank you very much. I hope you uh, don't expect me to fully fill that up. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, much appreciated, guys. Uh, so the German, uh, they want to thank uh, me and the team for the efforts, uh, you know, working on uh, Star Citizen, and uh, uh, you know they were founded back in 2012, uh, and um, uh, they're hosted by TheOrigin.de, a German gamer community that fights against DRM, bad behavior, and publishers, and cares about gaming culture, which we definitely do. So uh, uh, in March 2012, we launched our site. And uh, yeah, we've had uh, 1.6 million visitors, which is pretty awesome. So uh, we've got over 1,700 pages, which were translated in German, and we have great plans for the future. So uh, anyway, thank you guys for the t-shirt. That's really cool. And uh, you know, it's, as always, I'm always amazed by the level of enthusiasm and support around the world. I mean, Germany, everywhere else, though. I mean, you know, obviously here in America, but Canada, Australia, England, France. Uh, uh, you name it, uh, every one of the Scandinavian countries, so uh, you know, Norway and uh, Sweden and Finland and uh, Denmark and, uh, you know, and uh, I probably shouldn't go on because I'm going to be missing out because I think we're pretty much in like every single, uh, we're in most, uh, not every single place, but we're in pretty much everywhere. So whole places all, you know, all through Latin America in even little things like the Mauritius Islands and stuff like that. So, uh, so we've got a great, huge uh, fan base and community that's around the world, which is awesome. Uh, and I think that's kind of the really cool thing about making a game that's sort of digital and online and there's no sort of barriers or, uh, to joining or entry. And, um, and you know, we're definitely going to be trying our best to support as much stuff as we can in various different uh, languages and all the rest of stuff. I mean, we're early stages, so obviously we're not doing translations and all the stuff this early on, but uh, we really appreciate the various groups that sort of look after their particular, um, you know, language or, or, or country's uh, sort of interest before we can get there and sort of do our, you know, do the sort of official, okay, now it's in German or official in France. So thank you very much, guys. Um, and uh, it's a very cool t-shirt. And so now I'll get onto the 10 questions. All right. The first question comes from Sleeping Dragon, who asks, will Star Citizen landing zones feature the darker establishments that would undoubtedly crop up, such as drug dens, illegal casinos, and black market traders? Well, definitely there will be areas in the persistent universe that you will land, and there will be areas that will be much um, seedier and on the darker or the grayer side of the law than other areas. Uh, so it sort of depends on uh, the parts of the, the sort of known universe that you're venturing around in. And even in some, say, you know, big places like Terra, uh, there will be areas in Terra that will be sort of the seedier area where you go down to, uh, you know, we call it the blocks actually in Terra, which is sort of more the kind of slum areas of Terra. And back there, there would be, you know, a dark back alley, you'd go down a stairways and maybe you go to a sort of secret den or that would be the place where you would do your um, black market trading or you would get, um, you know, missions that wouldn't necessarily be sort of public or kosher missions, so to speak. So we're definitely going to have uh, that those aspects around, and we're going to try and make it very immersive. So when you're down on the planet, you know, it's not just I go there and I get an interface screen, and okay, now I'm getting some contraband or whatever. You'll actually, you know, have to go. You'll go to areas, knock on a door, and uh, you know, search out some of that stuff as opposed to some of the more, um, you know, kosher in your. Uh, you know, legitimate stuff that, you know, maybe that goes through the more normal channels uh, on, on Moby Glass and stuff like that. 
And the next question comes from Silent Ruin, who asks, if I'm in an instance and decide to jettison my cargo out of sight before I enter combat, but nobody survives, what happens to the cargo? Well, what's gonna, what, what will generally happen in the instances is they will persist for a sm, uh, small amount of time, but if there's no one in the instance at all, like you've, you've died and everyone else has died and there's no one in the instance after a uh, you know, small timeout period, I don't know, five minutes or something, uh, the instance will basically get shut down. So at that point, if there was cargo floating around in it, it would um, go away. So the thing is that if someone else came along or you survived the fight, you'd be able to pick up your cargo or someone before it gets shut down comes across that the cargo would persist in that instance until the instance gets, uh, gets shut down. So, um, but we, you know, it would, we can't really sort of start to simulate every single individual cargo piece and have it have its own individual persistence uh, independent of, of you because uh, you know, that could get um, pretty sticky pretty quickly. So, so I would say in this particular case, if uh, you had some valuable cargo and you were jettisoning it, um, you know, don't try to die <laughs> or make sure you have some friends uh, that would be uh, nearby that can come in and, and grab it and save it for you before that instance goes away. Um, all right, next question comes from uh, Hux, well, I don't know if you say Huxley, but it's Hux1E, um, who says, I love trading and being a market tycoon. Freelancer changed my life, by the way. Um, and I'm just wondering what the market in Star Citizen will be like. Will the market carry most slash all items in the game? Will prices be player driven? Can players only make profit by transporting goods to another system or they can buy low, uh, sell high right where they are? So, I mean, the market, um, you know, I mean, it's going to depend on location, obviously what's available uh, in terms of what people want to sell and what people want to buy on each different uh, planet and even each different sort of landing location slash city. Uh, so, you know, I would say it would be very unlikely that everything would be available um, in pretty much, you know, in all places. In fact, that definitely won't happen. Um, some bigger places like Earth or Terra would probably have a much wider selection. Things like Earth probably have a lot of demand to buy stuff, but probably don't sell that many stuff because no, you know, some of the manufacturing's moved off planet. Um, Terra may have more stuff that it manufactures, but also obviously has pretty high demand uh, of stuff. Uh, and you know, kind of one of the keys to the trading in, in Star Citizen is the idea of you know, obviously um, you know, buying and uh, you know, or taking stuff to a place that needs it and going back and forth. And, and I also wanted to sort of enforce uh, a mechanic that makes you sort of fly around and visit the universe. Um, so you know, you're not always going to be able to get the same weapon in every single store. So for instance, you know, maybe there's this really great manufacturer of ballistic weapons, but it's on this one particular uh, planet and you have to go there to get that that particular brand. Now maybe there's a business to be had going to that brand and buying a bunch of them and bringing them out and sort of setting up shops, selling them somewhere like on Terra or something like that. But that's kind of the dynamic we want to do. Uh, the economy itself will be um, player driven to an extent. So, um, you know, player actions will have an impact on it. If someone comes and sells a whole bunch of stuff, then the demand for that item will not be there for a while until um, the stuff that's been sold has been consumed. Uh, so there will be an effect of, of uh, you know, player actions on the economy. Uh, it, will, it won't be uh, overboard in a way that you know, we, we have a large world universe that's simulated with millions of NPCs and the player base will be a portion of that. So there's no way, uh, or hopefully there's no way, you never know because you can never, never say never in online games, um, that the players could sort of completely like uh, you know, unbalance the market because they, the, you know, the plan is they're going to represent about 10% of uh, the people tra trading in the market and the rest is, uh, is, is AI. But they will be able, to, you know, they will definitely be able to affect, uh, players will be able to affect sort of, you know, local, you know, like on this system, there's, you know, now longer there's no demand for iron ore because someone's brought in a whole bunch of it and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, in terms of making a profit by transporting goods to another system or just buying low and sell right where you are, I think generally you would have to transport stuff. Doesn't mean that you personally have to do it, but you could hire people to take it for you. So you could stay on a planet and run a trading empire without actually having to go anywhere. Uh, probably be a little boring because you know some of the fun is you know going there and adventuring and seeing places. Uh, but you know generally you know the buy uh, you know buy low, sell high stuff is you know you go and you know get the iron ore on the mining planet and take it to the manufacturing planet um, and then that's how you make a profit. Um, okay, next question comes from Cronus Viper 
Uh, will you guys consider having a long distance endurance race for larger class ships like Constellations? For example, a race across a section of the galaxy with specific checkpoints along the way where you would make a pit stop to repair and fix your ships. Yeah, you know what? That's a great idea. I mean, it's sort of that sort of sounds like uh, uh, there's a you know there's a couple of uh, uh, of sort of long distance rallies that are sort of like that, uh, and I think potentially that could be fun. I don't know whether it's necessarily a constellation race, but perhaps uh, certainly could be sort of the info runner style race. Um, but that's a good idea. So I mean, we'll definitely take that aboard um, as uh, something that we'll consider because the kind of one of the keys with Star Citizen is you know besides the obvious, okay, we're going to have the combat and we're going to uh, you know trade goods. I'm really keen on having a lot of different roles you can play that aren't necessarily sort of the default standard ones. So, you know, that's why we're doing the racing mode. Um, you know, we're looking at things like sort of salvage mechanics and mining mechanics and info traders and uh, info runners, basically. And so all of that, um, you know, so having that sort of, you know, even search and recovery, all that sort of nuance, I think, makes a much richer world and will be a much funner place for people to play and play different roles and, uh, you know, won't sort of feel very sort of straight ahead vanilla like you've had before. Um, okay, next question comes from Shalnan, who asks, are shields intended to function within an atmosphere? If so, do they create drag? Well, I would say that shields generally would uh, function inside an atmosphere. Um, I don't know if they necessarily would create drag, uh, potentially, but the, the, sort of the, the idea of the shields is they're much more for absorbing energy and not so much for um, preventing matter from entering, which is, is one of the ideas why ballistic weapons um, you know, have some of their energy leached from them, but they actually do penetrate the shields, whereas um, energy weapons um, you know, get absorbed by the shields until the shields go down, of course. Uh, so kind of the idea is that uh, armor, um, you know, is really built to sort of repel the, the ballistic weapons and the shields are built to repair the energy weapons. And so sort of kind of the fiction is that sort of slower moving kind of, um, you know, mass or objects or whatever, you know, the, the shield doesn't really stop them. It, it can maybe slow it down and take some energy. So perhaps it would have a little bit of drag, but basically most of like, you know, you know, atmosphere would sort of pass through the shields. Um, next question comes from Harlot who asks, what dangers can we expect planet side when riding a rover or other vehicles? Don't know yet, Harlot. So, I mean, a longer term plan is to actually add some kind of really fun PVE style content down on some planets. So this is not something that's day one, but longer term, we want to be able to sort of have some areas that you can go and explore in your rover or, uh, you know, maybe even have some procedurally generated areas of landscape that you can go and, you know, whatever, we have sort of the equivalent of the the random dungeon generator, but really it's sort of a random room generator and you go there and you've, you, you, you know, explore some ancient alien ruins and maybe there's some cool artifact that you can find at the bottom of it or there's some creatures you get to fight. Uh, so I think longer term we definitely want to do that and create content for when you go to places, whether it's down on the planet or, uh, you know, find a derelict space station or an asteroid base. Uh, so that's in our sort of development plan. It, you know, Obviously, all this stuff won't be there day one, um, you know, even when we have this sort of very first version of, okay, so this is what we call Star Citizen Complete 1.0. Uh, but like a lot of the other stretch goals, that's all stuff that, you know, we're sort of showing what, okay, well, we're going to be doing this next and this next and this next because you know, thanks to everyone's, uh, you know, very generous support, we sort of kind of have a really great um, product path and we sort of go, okay, well, we can do this and now it also means we can do these extra things. And so, you know, we've got years and years and years of work just making this game better and cooler and and uh, bigger and more immersive and uh, we've got you guys to thank for it so thanks very much um, and i'm pretty excited about it too by the way because it's awesome building a massive world and universe that we can all spend a lot of time in um, all right uh, next question comes from cyrops who asks how will player bounties be handled in multi-crew ships if a gunner destroys a friendly ship and the captain, uh, will the captain be held accountable? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, you know, the bounties, um, you know, reputation, all the rest of the stuff uh, will be, um, you know, tied to the ship, essentially. So the captain of the ship um, is the one that's ultimately responsible for it. Uh, if uh, he, uh, you know, and I think that we'll probably have some mechanic uh, maybe the same way that you know we do with organizations. Perhaps we'll actually just use the organization ship 
uh, organization system for the ship crew. So like basically think of the ship crew as a very small organization. And then of course in our organization system, we, you know, we have a, you know, we've talked about ways that you can sort of uh, share um, money, revenue, uh, people can pay you fees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that would all go in terms of the bounties and it would be up to the captain to how he set it up or how he agreed that he was going to pay the people. And uh, then on the reputation stuff, yeah, you've got to, you know, that would happen in today's world. I mean, in today's world, if you run out there and you've got a ship and you fire on some police with it, then, you know, you're going to be kind of, your ship's going to be held accountable for it. So make sure that the people that your friends you have in it aren't, um, aren't trying to get you in trouble. Um, okay, next question comes from F. John, who asks, are we going to be able to give air space support for FPS missions and or planet side war zones. So right now, no, I would say that is definitely not something that we have plans for. Um, I mean, you will in, in, in the way that if someone's gonna board FPS style on another ship, then yes, there's an element of, okay, you can go in there and you've got to take out the fighter cover, take out the, uh, you know, the anti-space craft guns so the landing ship can go in and do the boarding. So you can, you give space support for FPS missions in space uh, planet uh, for planet side not uh, yet um, I don't know that would be a much longer term feature down the road um, there's a lot of stuff we want to do before that I mean ultimately yes that would be a very cool thing to do but it's not going to be happening down on the planet anytime in the near future um, but you know who knows what's five years time or six years time um, okay, next question comes from Krell, uh, who asks, how much variation will there be in AI response? If I have a random encounter with a group of AI pirates, will they ever choose to run rather than attack? If I have killed half their team and they try to disengage, will they try to disengage and cut their losses? So yeah, we, we are shooting to try and have some fun and you know, more human-like AI. Uh, so I definitely think that would be cases where um, you know, the AI would potentially choose to flee rather than fight you, perhaps if your reputation's really strong or you know they feel like you've got them outgunned. Also, if the tide is turning and half the team's being killed, then you know, potentially the other ones may uh, you know, disengage and, and, and run away. And that, that's actually something we're working on. Kytheria, which is the AI uh, middleware that, we, that, that we're using, which is sort of being developed uh, kind of hand in hand with Star Citizen, uh, is really good for that and uh, you know, Tony, uh, Zurovec, who's our director of the Persistent Universe, has has some like he's a you know originally he was the lead AI programmer on um, uh, you know Ultima Seven and then became the lead programmer on Ultima Eight. So he started in AI. So he's got some pretty very cool AI plans for the Persistent Universe and uh, you know evolving stuff that we do down on the planet, stuff we do in space, and uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. All right, last question comes from Baldwin, uh, and that's Baldwin with a B-A-L-D-U-I-N, uh, I don't know, maybe I pronounced it wrong. If I am being boarded, can I use a vehicle's mounted weapon to defend myself? If so, can I then accidentally harm my own ship from the inside? Well, I think if you, if the, you had a vehicle inside and had a mounted weapon on top and there was enough room for you to use it, yes, you absolutely could use it and fire it because there's no reason why you couldn't use a vehicle inside, um, say, your bigger ship. Uh, and, but, you know, yes, you can accidentally harm your own ship from the inside. I mean, that, that, that's true also for FPS gunplay. So if you have setting off grenades or shooting or whatever, you're going to have to be careful where you're going to do it because if you do it near a window or an airlock, potentially you could blow it open and, uh, you know, that wouldn't be very good, um, which is kind of cool. I think it's kind of realistic. Um, so there you go. There's my 10 questions. I Hopefully you guys found them informative. Um, as always, it's, uh, it's been fun answering your guys' questions. Uh, thanks very much for them. Uh, as always, thank you to all the backers out there for backing um, Star Citizen to level you are. I think we're at 53 something million, uh, which is pretty amazing. Uh, thank you very much. And um, you know, thank you to all the subscribers for um, contributing extra money every month to enable us to do this extra level of content, which uh, is great because I really you know, like having the enhanced amount of sort of community interaction and content. Uh, you know, having a lot of fun and I'm going to be seeing you next week. All right, goodbye.
Hey guys, thanks for watching um, Ten for the Chairman. Uh, if you guys would like to uh, see more episodes, go here. If you guys would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel and always keep up to date with all our video content, go here. And uh, if you guys would like to watch episodes of Around the Verse, go here, please. And I will see you in the verse. <laughs>